In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful, the one God to whom all praise is due, the Lord of the world, the great God who was to come and has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And if we search the pages of scripture in the annals of history, we won't be able to find any person or persons more fitting that biblical description of the lost sheep or the lost people than the black man and woman of America and the Western Hemisphere, who have not only been lost from our native land and people for a little over 400 years, but we have been lost from the nature and power of our own being. We who recognize the condition that black people in America and throughout the world are in are grateful to Almighty God for his finding of us who were lost and for his raising up in our midst a divine leader, a divine teacher, and a divine guide to give the black man and woman of America the knowledge that would bring him and her home to self and our own people. I thank Allah for the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, and in their names I'm very happy and honored to greet you, my beloved brothers and sisters, with the greeting words of peace we say it in the Arabic language, Assalamu Alaikum. To those of you who don't know those greeting words, don't be upset. They are the greeting words that all of the prophets use. They simply mean, peace be unto you. It is in that spirit that I humbly accept Jack the Rapper's invitation to be a part of the family affair. We're very sorry that Brother Jack uh, couldn't be with us at least up to this point, though hopefully we expect him sometime tomorrow, if God pleases. We certainly hope and pray that he will have a speedy recovery because Jack has been and is a vital spark in the wheel that turns black music. I want to say, <laughs> again, my thanks to RCA and to Brother who introduced me and for sponsoring this brunch. Maybe after what I say, they may not be so happy <laughs> that they sponsored this brunch. But I want you to know, brothers and sisters, that I'm very, very honored to be in your midst. To know and to understand the, the power that God has blessed many of you in this room to have and the influence that most of you in this room have. It is a great and profound blessing to me to be able to help, to guide, hopefully, that influence and that power in a positive direction for the liberation of black people. Now, you may think that black music is separate from black liberation, or that the struggle of black people for liberation is separate from the pain that you feel in your involvement with those companies who suck the life blood out of our community, siphon our talent, corrupt our gifts, and then use our talent to make money for that which keeps our people in an oppressed state of mind, mentally, morally, spiritually, and economically. Yeah. 
some of us who share this dinner don't realize that our gifts and talents are being used by unscrupulous forces that are opposed to black advancement in any shape, form, or fashion. And some of us know we're being used and love it. I came today to add a serious note to the pleasure folk. I accepted this invitation because I recognize your value to the struggle and I pray that Almighty God will bless the words that I speak, that it not be just a sound in your ear, that you clap your hands and say right on and then walk out the door and be the same tool and the same fool that you may have been before you got here today. But I hope that what I say will make a profound change in the way you look at yourself and your role in the struggle of black people for justice. The time is too serious for us to mince words and play games. We really want to know where your head is at. Isn't that the theme of the... Yeah, I thought that's what the theme was. Where's your head? Some of you already know where your head is. And you know why your head should be lifted from where it is. Some of you think your head is in the right direction and maybe you'll find out that you need more direction for your head. But whatever condition your head is in, there is no head in this room, including mine, that can't use a little more knowledge, a little more wisdom, but above all, a little better understanding. So in the few moments that we're going to be together, I don't want to disturb your meal. I know you've had it already. <laughs> but while your stomach is beginning to digest this luncheon feast, let your mind begin to digest this spiritual feast. The time that we live in, brothers and sisters, is very serious. We live in that critical period of history where all of us are put in the valley of decision. Some folk don't like to make decisions. They like others to make decisions for them. Some folk don't wish that the lines be drawn so straight and so thin because they'd rather be this and that rather than this or that. But the time in which we live is so serious that when truth is made known, each one of us has to make a decision. And based upon the decision that we make, some of us are going to be friends, some of us are going to be enemies. Some of us are going to be brothers and sisters and some of us are going to be aliens because some of us are going to choose the wrong side in this day of war and revolution and some are going to choose the right side so it's best that you know where your head is. Huh? The Democrats and the Republicans have just had the greatest show on earth. And while they promise much and deliver little, the same old tune is being played to black ears who know that Carter represents a game. And Reagan, at least you know where he's coming from. But both men represent political parties and a political system that black folk are systematically deprived of that which these systems say they are for. Freedom, justice, equality, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. If we had all of that, we would know where our head was at and we would be moving straight on or right on toward the progressive thing that we should be about. But because of lies and deceit and chicanery and trickery, because of broken promises, 
because of a government that is unyielding and recalcitrant to the legitimate demands of a suffering black man and because of sellout black leadership who compromise the legitimate aspirations and hopes of black people who can't come in here and buy a dinner. They can't party and pop fingers like you because they're hungry, they're naked, they're ragged, and they're out of doors, but they're angry as hell, and they're about to bring this system to its knees. So you better know where your head is at. Because before too many days go by, blood will be flowing in the streets. And you that want to make black music, I wonder who will dance by the song you sing when the people are hungry and can't find food. When the people want jobs and can't find a job, how are you going to play a tune for people like that? You better listen. The masses of black folk are angry. You see a government shaking now. You see the mass of white people disenchanted with their own political system, disenchanted with their own political leaders. You see whites planning revolution in this country. You see the rise of the Ku Klux Klan, the rise of the fascists, the rise of the Nazi party. You see the country moving steadily toward the right, not toward righteousness, but toward the right making it possible for Reagan, a born-again conservative, <laughs> to possibly defeat the born-again hypocrite who lies in the name of Jesus. Now, I want you to listen. God is changing the face of the world. Right while we party, while we boogie, while we singing, get on down, dark people all over the world are getting on up. And the third world people are demanding more for the resources that America, England, Europe stole from them. And as they begin to demand more, the prices go higher. Labor costs more. And now revolution is in Central America, South America. It's brewing in the Caribbean. Before a year goes by, many Caribbean governments where you could go and lay on the beach in the sun and party will be bathed in the blood of the people who want a better life. And they want the foot of white America. They want the foot of imperialism. They want the foot of colonialism off their neck. So revolution is going to sweep the Caribbean. It's sweeping in Africa. And now in the Middle East, you find an Islamic revolution in Iran that is threatening the stability of the Middle East, which is the number one oil producer that makes the vinyl that your records spin on that makes the tape that you play your music on and as the plastic that makes the cassette has oil in it, the tape has oil in it, huh? As the oil prices go up, the tape goes up. The cassettes go up. And as it begins to go up and the prices go up, music companies, small ones, go out of business because black folk now don't have the money that they used to have. White folks stop buying because they understand that America is headed into a great depression. I know they're saying we're coming out of it, but there's a song we used to sing, it ain't necessarily so. <laughs> this thing is going down, brother and sister. And the sad part about it is it's taking us down with it. Mm. Everybody all right? <laughs> the aim of God today is found in the book of Genesis where it reads that the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Waters here represent the masses of the people. And in the masses of the people, you find a new spirit. People are calling for 
the accountability of their leadership. People in the countries of the world, when they revolt, they start killing their leaders. Have you noticed? They start killing the corruptors. They start killing those with influence and power who didn't use their influence and power properly on behalf of the suffering masses. They have trials and they execute. Liberia, a corporal, a sergeant, pardon me, overthrows a government, kills the president in his bed. They run his wife naked through the street. All of the government is on trial. And everybody that took a part in corrupting the country, corrupting the people, is on trial now for their lives. When Khomeini came to power in Iran, the people said, it's a genuine people's revolution. But the first act of the revolution is to punish those who sold out the legitimate aspirations of the people, bring them on the carpet, shoot them in the street, cut them down because they gave the power of their being to an alien force that was against the good of the Iranian people. These are signs, brother and sister. You think that that's just happening overseas? Why do you think Jesse Jackson has called for the federal government to protect black leaders? The federal government is the number one killer and destroyer of black leaders. Who would go to the government? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, I want you to bear with me. I'm a very frank, outspoken speaker because, see, nobody pays my tab. I don't belong to nobody but to God, and I belong to you if you desire me. But brother, I love to be in an uncompromising spirit. I love the fact that no white man can tell me I'm going to cut you off in the morning if you don't play ball. Because the white man don't feed Brother Farrakhan. I'm fed from the love of black people for what I say. I'm proud to be a man that they can't buy. I'm proud to be a man that they can't sell. There's only one thing they can do to me, and that is to kill me. And if they do, I want to make the price high enough so that if I'm dead, many of them will die along with me. This is your last day of killing black leaders and walking away from it and talking about it. We're sorry about it. It's a tragic mistake. The hell it is. You're going to live with those same kind of mistakes because as we bury our dead, they will be burying theirs. This is the day you're living in, black man and woman. This is the day you're partying in. This is the day you better think about your music and what we're going to do to survive as a people. That spirit of God that's moving over the people. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us, he said, brothers and sisters, study what is happening in distant places because the thing you see happening in places will soon be at your door. You never thought that as long as there was a Burger King and a McDonald's that you would see people hungry in the United States of America. You never thought that the day would come when the land of plenty would be screaming that it don't have plenty anymore. You never thought you would see the day when a person who works for the state would one day come to their job and find there is no job. The state has no more money or the city has no more money. But you are living in that crucial hour, brothers and sisters, and what you see happening on distant shore, the spirit of it is right now inside America. There are black people today 
who are tired of foolishness. There are black people today who understand that the reason we don't have anything is because former generations may have been too cowardly to pay the price and make the sacrifice to pass on something better to our children. So every generation starts off like the one that preceded it in the hole because this generation wanted the fruit of other people's suffering but did not want to sacrifice and suffer to provide a future for our young. So now as we party and boogie and get high and smoke reefer and snort cocaine and think that everything is going to be all right, the young people are planning their own liberation with you or without you. But I warn you in the name of God that if our people produce what the scriptures and history says they will produce, they're going to rise up against the hand of tyranny. You saw a sign of it in Miami, a sign of it in Chattanooga, a sign of it. But when the real stuff goes down, I wonder what you will answer when they come to tell you where your head is, that they have been clocking your movement. You don't know how well you're being watched. Brothers and sisters, bear with me about 15 more minutes. Those of us who have influence and those of us who have power are the stewards of the proper cultivation of the dormant qualities of the masses of the people. We are the stewards of the cultivation of the latent powers of the people. And to this end, institutions are formed and established. And it is the duty of these institutions to act as a mother, to nourish, to develop, to nurture the qualities that are in the human being. You hear the political parties say that our greatest resource is our human resource. Do you know what they're saying? Have you thought about what they're saying? They're saying that as the earth is rich with gold and diamonds and uranium and uh, pearls and everything that you need to make a material life, so is the human soul rich with the gifts of the creator. We don't need to be sitting here talking about what are we going to do if this record company fails, if that company fails. We are so full of powerful resourcefulness if tapped, if evolved, if nurtured, if developed, that we could solve our problem and the problem of the world with what God has already deposited in the souls of black people. Our suffering and our experience, our ability to take nothing and make something out of it, our ability to reach deep into ourselves when everyone thinks we should fade and fall out and come up with an answer to survive another day. That is the spirit and the power and the essence of black people. All praise is due to Allah. But listen, brothers and sisters, our people are like seeds that never germinate. They come onto the planet and they die with unfulfilled dreams and unfulfilled hopes and unfulfilled aspirations. They die miserable, full of envy, strife, bitterness, jealousy, contention, because there is no freedom to develop that which they know is within. Do you know, brother and sister, as you listen to me, I know that every one of you is also my master and my teacher. And do you know that as words of knowledge or wisdom and understanding come from my mouth by God's permission, I know that every one of you is also my teacher? Isn't it a shame that only a few of us make it in this world? while the masses have so much to offer? Have you noticed in your own business 
as things begin to cut down, jobs begin to go away, black stations begin to change their policy, militant spokesmen for the hurt of our people who happen to be DJs are being moved out, weak programmers are being put over the station to thwart and to block. Huh? White folks own the station and they get a black man or woman to look over the plantation to make sure that nothing progressive, nothing uh, creative really goes out over the airwaves to our poor suffering people. What I want you to see, and bear with me a few minutes, brothers and sisters, I want you to see and understand that every institution has failed to cultivate the best that is in black people. Black people aren't bad people. I know we do bad things. I know we are self-haters. I know we are murderers and the number one murderers of one another. I know that we are cheaters and liars and thieves. It's hard to even speak your idea near your brother because your brother will steal your idea and bring it to the white man and he'll manipulate the idea and give you nothing. I understand. But what I want you also to understand is that we are a product of training and we have been trained to be like Dogs for the master. Go, be hungry, but run out and catch the game and bring it back to the master. We are trained to be watchmen over his property. And if any black man gets too close, start barking. <laughs> what is it, Fido? There's a nigger in the yard. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. Beloved brothers and sisters, if the schools have not cultivated the best that is within us, how could it be when you have a doctorate degree and have no character? How could it be when you come out of college but you're a liar and a thief and a cheat? How could it be when you're proud and you're arrogant and you see your people need and you walk by them? That's not education. What good is education if it doesn't develop character as well as intellect? If it doesn't give you moral strength as well as intellectual prowess? How could we be developed with a doctorate degree and then a faggot at the same time? Huh? among us when if you were queer, you were hiding. You'd walk around with pianos on your back to make everybody think you was a real man. And when you broke down, you break down in the quiet of your home. But now, let it all hang out. Yes, I'm gay, honey. And I'm proud of it. Because there are no real men around. The man has been brought to nothing. I'm talking about the black man. Brought to nothing because no institution has cultivated the God power that is in the soul of the black man and woman. So your woman looks at you and you look at her. She sees you as nothing and you see her as an object to play with, to sleep with, to enjoy pleasure of her body but never try to feed her mind and she feed yours. Huh? Not only has the school failed, but the institutions, the religious institutions have failed our people. What good is it to make people holy and make them dumb at the same time? So they say their prayers. They say, I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't gamble. I would not be seen down there at that Black Music Association. I wouldn't go near Jack the Rapper. 
That's how we talk. But don't have nothing. You got the Holy Ghost, but the Holy Ghost can't guide you to set up your own record. <laughs> Manufacturing and distribution. You live in every city in America, but you relying on CBS and RCA to distribute your talent. And that's why you're a slave in 1980 to the white powers, huh? All praise is due to Allah. They make merchandise of you because you have no unity, and they have unity. They can call their brother in another part of town and say, we got a hot number. I want you to distribute it. They can call your station manager. Look, we got a hot one. You know, it's worth something. Play it. You can't call nobody <laughs> because you're so divided, so disunited so full of petty envy and jealousy, you don't see that your unity is the key to your success. Huh? I say all the institutions have failed us. The church has failed. The school has failed. The government has failed. The home has failed. The civic institutions, yes, NAACP, Urban League, you failed. How have you failed? What good is it to give a man the right to do a thing, but not the means with which to do it? What good is it for you to say, we got the right now to go to any toilet on the highway? Guess where we're having our affair at? We're at the Peachtree Plaza Hotel. The tallest in the world, brother. With $108 billion passing through our hands, we don't have one peach tree plaza of our own. We don't have a hospital to take care of our sick. We don't have nothing for our people but hell and bad mouthing and bad talk. And you want people to respect you as an equal with nothing? You want people to honor you and you don't honor yourself? All the institutions have failed to cultivate the soul of black people. And so black people come on the planet, they live and they die unfulfilled because no institution served their needs. So the scripture says, and there was no man to till the ground. It doesn't mean that God was looking for a farmer, but God needed a man who understood what to feed the souls of the people to nurture and nourish them so that out of them could come the greatness that God had deposited within them. And there was no man to till the soil. And so black folk stifle and suffer and die. You know, brothers and sisters, the wickedly wise who rule this world understand that thought is produced by what you see, hear, smell, taste, and feel that through your senses, messages come in to create thought. And if they can control what you see, what you hear, what you taste, what you smell, they also can control how you feel and how you think, can predict your actions and master you without you ever knowing that you are in 1980 a bigger slave than your parents were in 1680. <laughs> Beloved, God has put a magnificent school out here for us to study. But the Caucasian comes in between God and this beautiful universe, and he gives you something to look at. I strip your woman, and I make her real sexy for you. I want you to look at what I make. So here's my beautiful sister, and God knows, sister, you're beautiful. 
But you're not a plaything. You're not a toy. You're a serious creature of Almighty God. But the white man wants you to see yourself as boobs and butt. So that when you meet a man, you want to attract him with your bra lips shaking and going on. And then you turn quickly on him, let him get a picture of the shaking jello beneath. <laughs> and you know when you walk on off into the sunset, that boy's going to walk right on off behind you. <laughs> That's a hell of a way to attract a man. Because what you see is what you got. If you attract him on that low principle, that's what you got. And then after you lose this, and time gets a hold to this, <laughs> there he goes. He's gone after another young foxy thing. And you wonder why life is so cruel to you. Because what you see is what you get, and he's going to control what you see. Keep her looking at TV. When she get up, and when he get up too with no work to do, we'll take a look at the edge of night as the world turns. General Hospital. <laughs> Keep your revolving in a world of sickness. I go and I turn on my radio early in the morning, and here's my brother. Hey, baby. All you fine mothers out there. <laughs> Any resemblance to anyone in this audience is not a coincidence, brother and sister. <laughs> hey, you fine foxy mama out there. I'm spinning this one for you, baby. It's called uh, <laughs> In the Bush. <laughs> and boy, the thing starts rocking. Before you know, early in the morning, your head is just going. Late at night, head just gone. And you don't realize that you're being used by the powers to corrupt your talent and make you feed your people garbage so that you make pigs out of your people, keeping them eating from the slop trough of the degenerate life of this world. And you are the agent that they use. I want you to listen now. Everybody all right? I, I got to go in a minute. I said, where are you going, brother? Brother said, where are you going? I'm right here, brother. Let's finish this up. Do you realize that the airwaves are sacred? I'm talking to white folks, too. See, you're in power, and you misuse your power, that's why God is taking you out of power because you used your power for evil. You ought to learn, black brother and sister, because you're coming into power. Understand the mistakes that's bringing the white man's world down and don't repeat his mistakes in the time of your rise. Now, I'm not a racist. It may not sound that way to you, But I don't have a stone to throw at white people because they're white. That would be foolish. But I have a stone to throw at you because you're white, you're in power, and you're evil in your mistreatment of the masses of the people your own, but especially black folks. I want to talk to you. And you are going to reach exactly what you have thought. Now listen, everybody all right? Okay. The air is sacred. Now isn't that something a, a spiritual man at a black music uh, conference? But really this is what you need. You need somebody who's not going to try to butter you up because that's not your friend. You need a brother who loves you who will tell you the truth regardless to whom or what. Listen, I may not be able to speak to a, a gathering like this again for a long time, 
But I want this message to you that is on tape preserved and sent around to brothers and sisters so that in the quiet of their own home they can listen and confront themselves. Because in the final analysis, I got to confront myself. You have to confront yourself because change can only come from you within you. All right. The airwaves, I said, are sacred. Look at the Bible. Genesis. God makes a man, and after the man is formed from the dust of the earth, the book says he breathed into him the breath of life, and he became what? A living soul. Listen. He breathed into him. That means that the air had the power in it to turn the motor called the heart and start the generation of life. Is that right? That's the power of the air. Now you know that sound travels at 1,020 feet per second. Is that right? 1,120 1, feet per second. Thank you. But sound travels on air. All right. Sound, of course, also can travel on light, but we'll get to that later. If God breathed into Adam the breath of life and he became a living soul, and when you take in air, that's called what? Inhaling. Inhaling. All right, that's a, that's a good word. When you breathe your last breath, what is that called? Not only exhaling, but it's called the point of expiration. Is that right? So if, but listen now, if when you breathe your last breath out, that's the point of expiration. When you breathe your first breath in, that's the point of inspiration. There you go. Very good. Very good. Now, if breathing into the nostrils, and you accepting it is inspiration. Why is it that the prophets say that the word came down from on high? Is it that God is high all the time and sends it down? Of course not. But it is that his word is so above. The ideas contained in the word are lofty. The morals of that word are sublime. So since God is above what he sends to man, he sends it down. And if it's a word, it travels on the air. So when a prophet of God speaks, they say, he's an inspired man. Why is he inspired? Because he has inhaled the word of God. And the word of God has cultivated his dormant qualities. And the man is able to see, to hear, but not see and hear on a low plane. He sees and hears on a high plane. So he feeds inspiration to the people through the word of God. Jesus said in the New Testament, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Okay, now why are we getting to that? Because when you, and you don't control the airway, but when you have a chance to use the air to get to people, look, brother and sister, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, I can talk to you, you can talk to me. You can influence me, and I might be able to influence you one-on-one. -on -one. But Lord, when you're on the air, and you're talking to folk, and they don't talk back, you got power to influence the way people think. What do you think those commercials are for? Uh, brothers and sisters, if you have your car, if you've been in a wreck, go down to Honest Sam. He has a fine place over here on so-and-so, so-and-so street, and he will fix your wrecked car for so-and-so, so-and-so. So. Get Rinso, get Dove, use Colgate, use Rods that have tied. 
or life boy instead of ivory. You can influence people to do better with their lives. Unfortunately, they don't hire you for that reason. When they hire you, they want the most ignorant, foul, funky, low down, something that they can get their hand on. Listen, I'm telling you the truth. When you go to them, you go funky and foul. You come too dignified. So, oh, no, I can't have a dignified nigga here. This nigga dignified, he talk dignity to the people, but before you know it, them niggas will be dignified. I want me a down, funky nigga. Can you get down? Can you talk trash? Can you get funky? Can you get nasty? You got the job. Now look, brother, that's the basis upon which they hire you. And do you know why? White folks is into the business of mind control. Don't you know why black people are not productive? It's because their minds are being controlled and you are the agent that they're using. You in black music. Listen to me, brother. Because I'm warning you today, but tomorrow your head is going to roll. It's a bold statement, but you're not going to live doing this madness to our people. I'm telling you, one day before long, we're going to be in power. And we're going to deal with those who don't love black people, who hate our people and work for our people's destruction. And I don't give a damn where the axe fall. Don't say I know you, Brother Farrakhan. I don't know you. I'll be just like Jesus was to his disciples. When they said, Lord, we cast out devils in your name, he said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I know you not. Say, oh, Brother Farrakhan, you was doing all right, man. <laughs> Till you said that. I'm only warning, brother and sister. You got to do better by your people. That's you. That's me. I'm accountable, brother and sister. All these brothers that you see around me, as God is my judge, when I accepted the responsibility of trying to rebuild the work of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I took an oath. That if I violated the trust and became a traitor to the cause of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I give my brothers the right to take my life because I must be accountable. What good is, is, uh, is your word? Listen, if your word is not backed up by your life, what good is your word, brother? Don't you know we are tired of black people selling out black people and going away to live in peace? and luxury. No, you die where you live because you sold out the legitimate aspirations of our people. You should not live if you're a sellout. You should not live if you sell out our people's right to be free. You've got to die because you're selling death to our people. You dope pushers using your fame and music to sell drugs to our innocent babies. How long do you think you're going to live and get away with that? No, brother. No, brother. How long are you going to be a pimp using your fame as a DJ to come and grab up beautiful young black women who are impressed by the fact that you're on the radio every day? And you use that as your hit to strike out at dizzy, dumb women and then put them on the block. How long you think we're going to allow you to get away with that foolishness, brother? We want a great people and a strong people. And if it means that we have to take the head of those who oppose a righteous life for our people, then we are ready to go to war now. Now I come to conclusion. Look, brothers, sisters, I want to ask you. There are two worlds. There's the, the overworld and the underworld. Which world are you a part of? You know, in the Genesis it says God created the heavens and the earth. And he put the lights in the heavens 
to rule the earth. He made a greater light to rule the day and a lesser light to rule the night. But he put light to rule both circumstances, night and day. That's telling you and me that as there is a heaven above and an earth beneath, there's a heavenly part of man and there's an earthly part of man and the heaven should rule the earth. But in order for the heavenly part of man to rule the earth part of man, the light must be turned on in the heavens so that the man can have the power to rule himself. Do you hear what I'm saying? All right, now I'm coming to the overworld and the underworld. Adam fell, didn't he? Come on. Man fell, didn't he? Where did he fall? Did he fall out of the sky? No, it was a spiritual fall. Why did he fall? Look, you see this human body? Usually the navel is like the center, just above the navel, really. And you have the upper and the lower part of the human being. Is that right? The scripture says, love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. The three parts of you that serve God is the heart, the soul, and the mind. That's what God is after. When he comes, he don't come to the underworld. He comes to that which rules you, your heart, your soul, and your mind. Adam fell. Why? Listen. You see this dividing line, the navel? Right here is the stomach. The stomach represents the appetites of the human being. All of us are creature of urges and appetites. I got an appetite to eat, so I eat. I have an appetite, a thirst for drink, and I drink. I have a desire to be loved and to love. I have a desire for the material things of life, but that desire should be governed by what? An intelligent mind, a heart should be under the control of that intelligent head, and the soul, which is the essence of the individual, should be revolving around that light, that wisdom, to make sure that our desires are in harmony with the law and the will of God. So when Adam rebelled against God, he fell. It didn't mean that he fell down on the ground. It meant that he fell from ruling the body with the head, with the heart, with the soul. He fell now to being ruled by the earth. Now look, the stomach is over the navel. Is that right? As the head is over the body. Well, when your urges and your appetites become your master, then your stomach is your head. Where's your head at? Ain't that the conference? Look now, follow all praises due to Allah. Your stomach is your head. And then all of your passions submit to this, the appetite. So what do you want? I want a Cadillac. <laughs> what do you want? I want that white woman over there. What do you want? I want to be a big shot in the radio. Station. What do you want? I want to be a star. What do you want? I want a lot of money. What do you want? I just want to have a good time. What do you want? See, all your desires. Now, when you desire, here he comes. What you say you want? You want a Cadillac? I make them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, 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 man. Hey. You want a Cadillac? Look here. It's 17000 for the for the jive one. But you know you. And you know me. We're brothers. You want the best. I don't care what you got. You want the best. See, and white folks know this about your nature. It ain't that black folk like to just ride Cadillac. Black folk want the best because their nature tells them they are the best and they seek the best. Look here, brother. White folks know this. You go downtown to buy a high five. 
If they show you the least model which fits your pocket, and they show you the most expensive model which fits your taste, you buy your taste and not your pocket. And that's why you're in debt today, because you want the best. You understand what I'm saying? Are you ruled by what? Come on. That's your boss. That's where your head is at. It's in your urge, and it's in your appetite. So when he make the cat like he said, well, look, it's 21,000, the one you want. So you say, damn, excuse my language. Damn, I sure want that car. But Mr. Schlossenberg is only paying me a hundred and a quarter a week. Some of you just want, just to get on the air, you take 125, 150. Because I know you, brother, me and you are brothers. We flesh of each other's flesh, bone of each other's bone. I know why you take it, because you got a greater desire to be known than you have a, a desire to have money. So all they do is feed you with the desire to be known. Look, you be known. But I, you know, I, you know, I ain't got but 125 to give you, 150. I take it. But there's a Cadillac out there, 21 grand, 22 grand. Now you got to do something extra to make it. Here come payola. See? You set up now. Because the Cadillac, that's what you want. He coming, look at him, man. You need that Cadillac, man. And here come mafia. Hey, look at him. You got a lot of appeal. A lot of people listen to you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You really have increased our ratings. Now look, there's a way I want to talk to you. I want to meet you. Can you meet me for dinner? Dinner? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where you want me to meet? They take you at the fine club, you know? They walk in, everybody knows them. How do you do, sir? Oh, no, no, no. And you say, me with my with my wet look. <laughs> me with my, you know, my what do you call that? Jerry curl. <laughs> Everybody digging me, man. So you got your white on, white in, white, and you step on in and you sit down. Order what you like. And he's got diamonds flashing everywhere. And he reaches in his pocket and over. A lot of money come out, nothing but hundred dollars with a thousand dollar coat in it. And he does it in front of your face. You say, Man, I never seen too much money. <laughs> say, look, you're a very popular young man, you know. And I think you could help our organization and we can help you. Why don't you sell these drums? I don't do those kind of things. <laughs> Everybody's using them. So why don't you sell it? They're going to buy it from somebody else. Why not let them buy it from you? Now you're wrestling with yourself. Man, I can't do that. If I get caught, they tell you, well, if you get caught, the syndicate backs you. Just like they backed the shot till he got caught. <laughs> Always remember when white folks promise you that's up until the time you get caught. You understand that, don't you? He can't be trusted. His word don't mean a thing. And you putting your life on that word and killing your people. Now look, brother and sister, I just want to say this. Desire. And right at that table, he got a fine white woman. Right at the table, eating dinner. And you can't talk to the man for looking at her. <laughs> and she just throw in her hair. And you know your woman can't do that. She may break her neck. <laughs> and before you know it, 
He says, excuse me a minute, and he steps away to the restroom, and she starts talking. Oh, hello, you know, I listen to you on the radio. You're so sexy. Because I don't want to talk that in front of him. He's my man, but you're sexy. Well, you know, baby. <laughs> and before you know it, you and the white girl gone. Now you really in heaven. $125. A white woman and a pocket full of dope. And later, about a month later, you got your Cadillac. Got you your nice car. You're getting your nails done. And you're a big nigga. But you're part of the underworld. Your people dying because they want to breathe. And you're stifling and suffocating them because you like a Cadillac more than you want people to breathe. Now here comes the black music, or the big music man. RCA, people who sponsored me today. CBS, Columbia. They send their scouts out, usually it's us. Here's a fine talent. Girl got a beautiful voice. I want you to make a record demo. People busting their rump, making a demo, going in the studio, paying all kind of little money that they got just to get a product because they want to be known. And then you tell them, the demo's all right, I'll give you a royalty deal. Knowing all the time that they don't know how to count no royalty, and you end up giving them what you want to give them, and then you say, didn't make out too good, that record. Or if the talent is real good, you say, here's a song we want you to sing. And what's the song? Let's get on down and let's get funky. Here's my gift of God now that got me to your door. And when I come in your door, you become the corrupt and tell me, this is the song I want you to sing. Let's get on down and let's get funky. Now when it hits the airwaves with that beat behind it, here's your baby now. Let's get on down and let's get funky. Ha. Get on down. And before you know it, the children just going. <laughs> Little behind just swinging teaching her to be a whore at two and three years old. You're seeding their minds with getting down at a time that God wants the people to get up and get funky. Why? Because you love a dollar more than you love the salvation and freedom of your people. And after you have made your million, then you get on your mountain and talk crap about how you for the people. Well, this is the day of judgment. We got to own our own radio stations. We got to stop looking to white people to do for us what we must unite and do for ourselves. If Polydor says that 67% of their music in the 80s is going to be black, black artists, black music, what does that represent in terms of management? What does that represent in terms of black folk getting high paying jobs on the staff at Polydor? Nothing's happening. You get a token nigga here and a token one over there and a token one over here, but all the bulk of the money, you never see it. But it's because you don't want to do it for yourself. You don't have a mind to think, well, I can do that. He set up distribution. What's wrong with us? setting up distribution. Every one of you, every one of you belongs to church. Why can't you make the churches in every city a point of distribution? Somebody can do it. Organizations got chapters in every city. Why can't they begin to distribute your records? It ain't as hard as you think it is. All you got to do is want it bad enough and come up top with the right stuff in your head, in your heart, and your soul, and breathe life into your people so that when they turn on the radio, that's my man. Who's that? 
That's my brother, the cool one. And what is he saying? He's telling black kids to get a good education. He's telling black kids to learn the knowledge of themselves so they can love themselves. He's inspiring black youngsters to look out for their elderly. And instead of ripping them off, take care of them. Who's doing that? The local DJ. Who's doing that? That's radio station W so and so and so and so. That's our station. If the station is feeding us, then we want to know what you feeding us. And we got to have some control. And in the future, if that station does not feed the black community the things that we need to be inspired to live, then that station will not exist. You hear me? The brothers and sisters are paired up, brother. You see, I made a record. I'm not an artist. I used to be. I used to play the violin. I used to sing calypso. I used to do these things. But I gave it all up because this word that is in my mouth is more important than music because it's music on a higher level. I love your music. Your talent is magnificent. It's ours. But I want to see it used so you can benefit, so the people can benefit, so that with the money that we make through black music, we can set up the institutions that will cultivate what our people need. We need hospitals. We need schools of our own. We need farms. We need factories. Black music is making it for white people, but not making it for ourselves. And we got to turn that around. And so, brothers and sisters, I thank you. And I pray that Almighty God will bless you to come up from the underworld into the world that's ruled by an enlightened mind and a heart that pumps with the love of truth and justice for our people and a soul that is set on fire with the desire of liberation. And then the stomach becomes our servant and our desires become our servants. And that's how we are mastered by Caucasian people. They want to know what you want out of life. And if they know what you want and feed it to you, they give you this if you give them that. There is no compromise. Today, we want freedom, foremost, for ourselves and our people, and there's no compromise. We want a future for our babies, and there is no compromise. We want a better education, not an education that makes me ashamed because the color of my skin is black and my hair is nappy and my lips are thick and my nose is broad and my origin is in Africa. I don't want no education like that. I want an education for me and for you and for our children that will make us look in the mirror and when we see the blackness of our skin, we will know that I'm black not because I'm cursed, I'm black because I am the original man. I am black. I am black because two white people cannot produce nothing but white. They can't produce yellow. They can't produce brown. And they sure can't produce us. I am black like Solomon. But comely, oh ye daughters of Jerusalem, I'm black because I'm your father. I am black because everything came out of blackness and then into the light. I am black because I am the originator. I am black because I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending of all things. I am black because I am the essence of God and the essence of God is in me. Yes, I'm not cursed. I'm proud because I'm black. If they're proud because they're white, should not I be pleased because I'm black? Oh yeah, my hair's curly. Take a good look at it. I ain't got no jerry curl in it. White folks and black folks make that stuff up for people who are dissatisfied. Because you don't like the way the creator made you. You think you can beautify yourself some more. So you do everything to yourself except and kill yourself right along with it. Put a lie in there, burn it out. Make it blonde. Make it brunette. Fix it up. For what? So that Clairol gets rich. 
Everybody in that business get rich. You get poorer and dumber because you're dissatisfied with your own natural magnificent beauty. You don't need nothing to make yourself beautiful. I know white folks tell you a woman is ugly, but if your black woman is so ugly, why is he hanging around her doorstep all the time? <laughs> you come on home. You need an education that will make you love your black woman like you love yourself. You need an education that will take your fist out of her mouth. Stop you from beating your woman and make you recognize that your woman is a part of yourself and you can't go nowhere without her and she can't go nowhere without you. Come on, black man and woman. Put your talent to work. Put your genius to work. Put your music to work. And let's own thousands of acres of farmland so we can feed ourselves non deaf that the Caucasian is feeding you and me day and night. Take your mouth out of the white man's kitchen. Go on, black man, with your music, but let your music buy ships for you that you can trade with third world countries across the water. Then when we sing and when we dance, it'll be a new song and a new dance. I don't mind dancing that kind of dance that put a ship on the ocean and a plane in the sky and put institutions there for black people, and then white people that laugh at you, mock you, ridicule you, scorn you, and make a fool out of you, they'll tip their hat and say, good God Almighty, the nigga is up. <laughs> now we can see where his head is at. Thank you for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Has a, has a speaking engagement in another city and he has to go right to the airport. But a copy of today's tape will be available in the back on your way out. Also the publications of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Thank you.